Welcome back. Uh, time to talk about the uh, NPP. And just from conference ahead of 2020, what does it mean for the party? And uh, having the studio leading member of the NPP, he had once uh, contested to lead the party into a general election. My guest is Honorable uh, Adai Nimo. Good morning. Yeah, good Hope morning. Hope you're doing great. Yeah, good morning, right. And Thanks I, for, I am good to thank for joining us. So let's begin the conversation from here. The party just came from Kofo and uh, executives were elected into 2020. Now, this crop of executives elected, how well would it ensure an NPP victory in 2020? Well, thank you very much. First mm -hmm. of all, let me say good morning to your viewers. Um, last weekend, we had a fantastic annual conference which saw the election of new <coughs> national officers. And you notice that some of the national officers elected are not new. They were old national officers who contested for different positions, mm. and they won. So they already have an idea about what the work entails. They were part of the campaign in 2016, which was prosecuted and secure the victory for the party. National chairman now is Mr. Honorable Freddie Blay, General Secretary, John Boadu, National Organizer, Samuel Uku, and then the other national officers who have been ele elected. We need to commend ourselves as a party mm. for such a fantastic conference. There were no incidents or accidents. We came out strong. The theme for the conference was building a stronger united party. So, having successfully, successfully gone through this, the next stage is to have a reconciliation amongst ourselves, get the whole vehicle of the party in the shape for the 2020 general elections. What, what reconciliation are you talking about? If you said the party came out stronger from Kofu. Well, you know, after elections, uh, they are winners, they are losers. Mm -hmm. So you need to bring everybody on board. And that is what I am talking about. So you were not happy with the build-up, particularly between uh, the two front runners in the, uh, in the chairmanship contest? No, uh, I mean, I was happy. And I'm so happy. The way the campaign went, allegations yeah. of voter buying and stuff like that. Well, the decision has been made. And the decision was, was made by the delegates. 275 constituencies mm. with 17 member constituency executive, members of parliament, national council, or council members, external branch delegates, um, MMDCs, ministers of state. So the decision has been made. The next phase, in my view, is to get everybody on board for the task ahead. Which How is easy is that? Well, it is easy. We have come out of such a situation before. I mean, in 2002, 2005, 2010, 2014, and 2018. And so, for the new officers under the leadership of Mr. Blay, we have to champion the cause of getting everyone to be on board and to bring everybody's expertise or ability. Because the game is about numbers. It's not about any single individual. It's about numbers. So we need to marshal all our numbers, marshal all our forces together for the 2020 elections, as we did in 20, uh, 2016. Mm. And I believe that we must strive for unity, a united front, always. In political party, unity is key. Unity in diversity or unity in oneness is key. And that is where you get the people, everybody being accommodated, everybody being embraced to come on board that. You are also part of the vehicle. You have an important role to play. So. We need to get uh, Stephen in team, all the losers, not only Stephen in team, all those who contested for the, video, for the vice chairperson's positions. I think there were six or seven, so, and three of them won. So the remaining three or four 
Agnes Chigabatia, uh, Isaac Amu, Ken Wood, they all have to come on board. The General Secretary, Richard, who contested John Bordu, also has come on board. The two young men who also contested uh, Samir Wuku, they all must be on board. They must have a feel that they are also part, even though democratically. They lost the election. They lost the election. It doesn't mean that they are shunned by the party. You have uh, said that it's a game of numbers. So you bring in those who lost in Kofoidi on board. What about those you, you have avoided in the build up to Kofoidi? I'm talking about Mr. Afoko, Mr. Japan, Mr. Sami Krab, and the rest. Well, we need all of them. We you need them, but you're not going for them. The party isn't going for them. Well, so now the new national chairman, Mr. Freddie Blay, he has to lead that, that. Can he do that? I'm sure he can. He's capable? Oh, he, he should be capable, and he is capable. He's been a public figure for many years. He's been a member of parliament. He's been a deputy speaker of parliament. So, and he's been in the game of politics, and he knows that it is about numbers. And everybody is important in this game. Because the value of the thumb is not different from mine as compared to you, Bright. It's the same. And so if you have to garner the votes, you have to bring everybody on board. So I, I will use this medium to urge the new national chairman uh, to strive for a stronger unity in the party. And another there's no unity every day, every time, because, of, because it is a human institution. Mm. We must at all times strive for unity. And in this case, I believe it is unity in diversity. The party is not faced with the problem of factionalism. But Brian, what is the definition of factionalism? Okay, so the three officers we see who have been suspended are seen to be on the other side in the party. Right. Again, I will pose the question, what is fashionalism? You, a family man, with your wife and maybe four or five children, mm. do you express the same love and admiration towards each of your children, the same level? So in a huge party like New Patriotic Party, there is definitely dissenting views. And that doesn't suggest in opposition and that is why i emphasize on unity in diversity we must recognize that we have come from different background so they are out so but they are part of the party they they are they are in any case they are their tenure of office is over but they are still their membership of the part they, their membership of the party uh, is still intact they've not been as uh, expelled from the party. They were relieved of their various positions or suspended from their various positions. So we must embrace them. We must stretch our hands to say that, look, gentlemen, we need you. Mind you, easy. there are people who also have admirers. Either they are in the party or they are outside the party. Mm. And so some people will even look at Mr. Kwebrene Japan and say, look, Mr. Kwebrene Japan is back. He's now actively involved in MPP activities. So I have admiration for him. And in that case, I am going to be a member of the party. And I'm going to campaign for the party for the I 2020 see. elections. So Some have suggested Let that. us not suggest that, I mean, nobody uh, is not, uh, everybody uh, can be just dispelled away with. And you need all of them. We need everybody. That is my view. Some have suggested that the leader of the party now should, should engage in this, this embrace you're talking about, should bring this theory on board. What do you think? Well, we have a national chairman. You have a leader too. We have the president. Mm. Who's the leader Who, of the party? Well, by the provisions of the party's constitution, mm. there is no clear provision like that. But okay. I mean, indirectly, the president, President Nanel Kufuado, mm. indirectly is the leader of the party. But he has to work also together with the national chairman. So the two of them, in my view, will constitute that strong leadership for the party. And so both of them will take steps. And I believe that they have been 
old uh, politicians, they, they know the terrain, they know how the game is played, they know that everybody is important in every, every corner of the country so that you can secure our maximum votes 50% plus one and continue in government. Do you miss parliament? Well, <laughs> somehow. Because I have to tell you, he was a former member of parliament for Mampo constituency. You well, that it, I parliament? mean, yes, I mean, when you are involved in legislative activity mm. or function, when you are involved in uh, uh, supervision, scrutiny of the executive, I mean, public service, if, if you represent your people, it's an honor. And you offer quality leadership to them, it's an honor. So if I say I miss parliament, maybe the input that I, I mix in offering to nation building, mm. that is why I say so. Uh, nonetheless, you can still operate from the private sector and, and contribute, contribute to, to your quota to the public sector. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's the two ways. You, you performed creditably well when you went for the uh, flag bearership of your party. Your supporters think you should come back. Are you coming? Coming back where? To contest for the flag bearership of the NPP. Oh, right. I think that uh, I mean this, this is premature. And I, I believe you don't seek to ambush me. No. Okay. I mean, the party has a tradition. You, if you recall, in 2004, when President J. Kufuor was the leader of the country and the party, I mean, he was giving the nod to contest again on a post. And I believe similarly, once President Kufuor will be contesting, mm. he will go on a post. So where is the call for uh, coming back to contest? If he doesn't go, would you go? Well, that is now a different question. You are now changing the, the goalpost. So if the sitting president doesn't seek to contest again, then what happens? The party must find a new person to lead the party to the 2020 general Would you give yourself up for that position? Of course, my ambition is there. It is, it is not out of place to have an ambition. I mean, everybody has an ambition. So... If you have an ambition and you know that you have God-given talent that you can bring to help your society, your people, why do you want to shake that responsibility? Some have described you as the next president of Ghana after uh, Nana Kufado has exited under the NPP. Well, I don't know those people who have given that description. Mm -hmm. But um, we say that it is the good Lord who ordains a leader. And leadership may come from different angles. Barack Obama never considered one day he would become the president mm. of the greatest nation on this planet. Mm. But it happened. Macron in France never thought that one day as a young man, below the age 40, he could rise to become the president of France. But he is now. So... Uh, I welcome those who say so, mm. but it requires a lot of work. It requires acceptability. It requires demonstrating to the people that, yes, if the confidence is reposed in you, you can steer the affairs of the nation. You can bring wealth, peace, happiness. The essence of being a leader is to create happiness for your followers. And that is key. <laughs> it's been so wonderful talking to you. We are there. We have a party to serve mm -hmm. and the New Patriotic Party. Uh, we are committed to helping the MPP led government under Nana Abdodanko's administration to succeed. The achievements of this administration are those that will propel us into 2024, 2020, 2024 and beyond. Mm. Just as J. Kufo's achievement prepared us to come to power in 2017. So that is where our commitment is at the moment. I mean, we have made a lot of uh, I mean, promises to the good people of this country mm. as a party. And we must work to ensure the welfare of, our, of, the, of the general public. 
it's been wonderful talking to you. Thanks so much for passing through our studios. Well, it's also been nice, I mean, hosting me this morning, mm -hmm. right? And uh, if there's any other thing that we can do together, let's do it. All right. Because we have a nation to build. I'm grateful. And we have a government to support. I'm grateful. Former mm -hmm. member of parliament for 